This is part three of renovating a vintage horizontal twin cylinder model steam engine. In the current clip on screen, I'm removing the main bearing top caps. This will allow me to remove the bearing journals and remove the crankshaft eventually. One thing that becomes immediately evident is that the cylinder cover bolts are entirely different to the bolts that hold the main bearing caps in place. So I'm putting the bolts that I remove in separate plastic bags and the bags are labelled up so when I put the engine back together it will make the whole process a lot quicker. However, I do not need a plastic bag for the bolts that hold the big end brasses in place because immediately that I remove the big end brasses from the crankshaft I'm putting the bolts back in to keep the big end brasses together. Once the bolts that hold the big end brasses are back in place I can swing up the connecting rods out of the way and what a state they are in. The steelwork on this engine is very rusty indeed. This is really going to take some cleaning up. But never mind, I always did like a challenge. The last parts to take off are the eccentrics and the rods. This is the last one coming off now. And as you can see, I'm putting the bolts back in the forks so I don't lose them. And now there should be a drum roll really because I can remove the crankshaft complete with the eccentrics and rods. And the next thing to do is to remove the eccentric sheaves from the crankshaft entirely, along with the outer bearings. And then I can see the crankshaft in all its beauty. It's very well made, that's a good sign. It's very rusty, that's a bad sign. So I'm starting off on a piece of coarse wet or dry sandpaper, with a drop of oil to stop it from binding. And it's just a case of doing this for quite a long time. Before I carry on, I must say that this video is speeded up and also that it took a lot longer than this even running in real time to get this crankshaft clean. It was a real mess. To be perfectly honest, I did put the crankshaft in the lathe to spin it to clean up the shaft sections. But I'm not showing this in the video because it's far too dangerous. I did actually video the process in the lathe, but it looked really bad, a health and safety nightmare. My old workbenches in the workshop are woodworking benches and they have rectangular holes in the wood along the front which are normally perfect for dropping nuts and bolts through onto the floor but they're also useful for doing this. As you can see I'm putting the crankshaft down into the hole and I can attack it with a needle file. And once I've been using the needle file for a while I wrap some wet or dry sandpaper around the needle file and use that. And then finally, as we get towards it looking a bit better, I'm using some tea cut on some 800 grade sandpaper, and this is to clean up the main crank webs. If you're doing a job like this, it is really tedious, and you must not apply too much pressure, otherwise you're likely to make a mistake and wear something out very quickly. It's just back and forth on different grades of wet or dry sandpaper. And eventually, the crankshaft starts to look something. Here I'm spraying it with some oil to prevent any further rusting. It's not 100% there yet. I need to do a little bit more cleaning, but it's getting there. It really did take me quite a long time to get the crankshaft to look like the picture you've just seen, because it originally looked like this. I'm now going to have a look at the eccentric rods, but the first thing I'm going to do is take out the grub screws from the eccentric sheaves. These will go into the plastic bag marked crankshaft parts. Once again, I'm cleaning up the eccentric rod using some wet or dry sandpaper, but I'm getting nowhere fast with this. This is really deep rust. It's just a case of persevering and being very careful not to round the edges of the rod. While I think on, I'll remove these nice little oil cups from the eccentrics. I wouldn't like them to get lost and I'll put them in the same bag as the crankshaft parts. And now it's back to my least favourite job, cleaning up very rusty steam engine parts. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.